Well, good morning. It's Bill McCarthy again from the Southwest Indian Foundation. I hope you're well wherever you are. Uh, This morning, we're we're going to talk a little bit about an event in the life of specifically the Navajo people, but uh, uh, many of the other tribes in the in the desert Southwest. uh, That basically was a defining moment in their history. It's it, it's a it kind of a splitting in time in many ways from the long walk. The long walk um, probably originally originated around the time of the Civil War uh, in the early 1860s, um, and there was total chaos across the country. The, the West, the Old West, w- was not excluded from, the, from those realities. The U.S. government uh, was v- weak at the time and, and, and in fairness, fairly incompetent uh, that the, uh, they were trying to not only uh, control slash uh, 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 protect the Navajo people, but but then they were also trying to to basically su- uh, s- suppress them, and I, I think that's a fair fair assessment. So a, a head of the Western region, a general James Carlton, he basically uh, tried an experiment. He, it, it was a, it was a disaster, but had decided to unfortunately round up all of the Navajos and basically um, uh, uproot them. Uh, destroy their lands, their livestock, their homes, uproot them, and have them uh, march all the way across to the uh, New Mexico border, uh, rounding up, uh, sadly, uh, like chattel, walking children, uh, uh, nursing mothers, uh, expectant mothers, the aged, the sick, the infirm, for 400 miles without uh, you know stops along the way uh, it, 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 it was it was a travesty uh, of, of judgment they they had to walk where they were you know they were driven uh, it was a force force march force walk the, the encampments didn't have enough food uh, there were more people than they had anticipated so there were well there were around roughly around 10,000 uh, women men women and children uh, many of them died when in uh, that area, um, and and then there were floods along the Pecos River, the flooding out the crops. Uh, it, it, I could go on and on. Uh, you uh, you study this on your own. However, at uh, in 1865, you know, a little over a year later, there were, in the in the morning time, large groups of the natives had fled. And many of them uh, disappeared into the hills. Many of them, uh, most of them actually try to walk all the way uh, back to their ancestral grounds and their ancestral homes. Um, uh, Some were successful, but uh, by uh, uh, most estimations from the historians, well over 80% of of the tribe was completely, uh, you know, devastated, wiped out. Uh, it was really a, a, a type of tragedy to, to the people, uh, to the Navajo people that they, um, in, in many ways, uh, they still have not recovered. Uh, from Their scars were so deep, they were so lasting, uh, there were so few left, and that, that people of that time particularly lost whole families and whole extended families. And it's, it's hard to wrap, wrap your mind around uh, around that, and and they still, uh, the the people still carry those scars with them today. The the important thing is that we hopefully that we do not forget, le- as the poet says, lest we forget, lest we forget, and that's why we have tributes and memorials, and we have histories, so that the next generation, the present and next generations, are aware of what has come before them. Uh, so it's vitally important for us as a people and a culture, uh, a blended in a blended culture. So um, with that, uh, I, I'd like to encourage you to, you know, smack the, the bell there, the uh, subscribe, like, and comment if you wish. And hopefully we, uh, we can, as a people, hit a reset button uh, and uh, get uh, transform beyond the long walk and uh, just like the aspirations of, of the Navajo people, um, let us uh, uh, attempt to, to walk in beauty.